Hello, everyone. I know um, folks are still filtering in to uh, the webinar, but I want to say welcome and thank you so much for being here. We will start in just a few minutes. I'll give folks um, a couple more seconds to sign on and then we will go over the agenda for today. But hopefully it should be a great taste of UMN Law. All right, well, we can go ahead and get started. My name is Molly Wagner. Um, this is just a short overview of what um, I will be talking about. I'll go over an introduction. I'll talk a little bit about why I chose Minnesota law, and then we'll go over the agenda for the rest of the program. So just to tell you a little bit about myself, um, I am currently a 2L. I'm originally from Southern Maryland. Uh, I went to undergrad in Washington, DC. I studied political science at American University. Following my graduation, I actually moved to South Dakota and spent a year working on the Yankton Sioux Reservation doing domestic violence and community organizing. I then moved back to DC and I worked in the private sector for four years before um, applying to and coming to University of Minnesota Law School. Um, moving out for, to Minneapolis for law school was my first time being in Minneapolis, so definitely an East Coast transplant. Um, and at the law school, I'm specifically interested in tax and ERISA law, so regulatory compliance. And, you know, specifically, um, I am involved in outlaw as the, I'm currently the co-president, and previously I was the 1L rep. Outlaw is the LGBTQIA plus affinity organization. So that's one of the largest activities that I'm involved in outside of schoolwork. Um, I'm also on law review. And in addition to that, I am a Robina scholar. So, but which is a program you can apply for as an admitted student. Um, and it helps support interests in public interest. For instance, uh, my one all summer, I was a law clerk at Mid Minnesota Legal Aid's low income taxpayer clinic which was a great experience and also really prepared me for my clinic work that I'm currently doing over the semester at the University of Minnesota's tax clinic. Um, this coming summer, I will be shifting away from public interest and I'll be doing big law. Um, I'll be a, an associate at Site Barth and Shaw in um, their Chicago office, focusing on ERISA and employee benefits. So that's a little bit of my background, um, but focusing on why I chose Minnesota Law School, there were really three things that I thought about and contributed to my decision in coming to Minnesota Law School. Um, first off, I spoke to a lot of current students, both through events hosted by the law school, such as this First Look Friday. Um, mine was in person, <laughs> but hopefully you can get the same feel of kind of the genuine Minnesota atmosphere through these types of events that we're hosting. But I also connected with a lot of folks via email um, or phone calls. Zoom wasn't really as big then, but we are, you can also connect with folks via Zoom. And through my con connecting and kind of talking to current students, I just really felt that Minnesota had the kind of um, atmosphere and community that I could see myself in. The current students that I was talking with, I really felt that I could see as my classmates and I really wanted them as my peers. Um, and I've found since coming to the University of Minnesota, the community is one of the strong, our strongest aspects. Um, I love kind of, I love my section. I love um, the two L's and three L's that I've gotten, that I got to know in my one L year. And I just really feel um, supported by that community. And I think it's a huge asset to my law school experience. Looking more programmatically, something that really tr attracted me to Minnesota was the mix of more traditional doctrinal lecture classes and the um, more experiential learning that Minnesota had. When I was making my decision, I did a lot of, I did a couple informational interviews with law firms in the Washington DC area because I wanted to see how a Minnesota degree translated back to the East Coast, because I wasn't sure where I wanted to end up. And one thing that I consistently heard um, from those informational interviews was that University of Minnesota was known for producing great writers, um, and they were thought of having, having a really great 
legal writing program. Um, legal writing is something that is always highly sought after in applicants and is usually put as one of the top requirements for any type of legal position. So I was really um, excited and interested when I heard that. Additionally, um, Minnesota has an amazing uh, practical program for 1Ls called Law and Practice, which is a 100% simulation-based course that you take the spring of your 1L year. And it's a really great opportunity to get, to kind of put that doctrinal learning that you've had from your first semester, um, as well as your other spring semester courses into context. Um, so it's, it's actually really fun in the sense that the school brings in volunteer actors to act as clients and you actually go through the motions of doing depositions, doing um, witness interviews, doing different types of negotiations, you write settlement letters. And it's just a really great kind of experience to have in terms of putting, be, preparing you to go out into the real legal field and being able to put all those skills and kind of some of that more doctrinal knowledge that you've learned from your semester into real practice. Additionally, I was really attracted to Minnesota's clinic opportunities, uh, mainly because there are so many different clinics at the University of Minnesota. It's not just for folks that are interested in litigation or public interest, but there's also a lot of clinics geared towards more transactional or private sector work. So for instance, I'm interested in tax law and I'm working in the tax clinic. And it's a really great opportunity to get exposure to the tax code and working with the IRS, but also doing direct service and working with folks in the community. And it's something that I really, really enjoy. Um, and lastly, I would say what really, uh, what really brought me to Minnesota was the reputation in alumni network. I saw that as creating an opportunity for um, various types of postgraduate work. So as I said, I'm originally from the East Coast. I wasn't really committed to the idea of coming to Minneapolis and staying in Minneapolis. I wanted the opportunity to work in different, a different market after law school. Um, and I found that not only through the opportunities of the Career Center, but also through our alumni network, it's very easy to extend and explore opportunities in markets other than the Twin Cities. Uh, which is a, exactly how I got my two all summer position in Chicago. Um, and I really wanted a school that supported and fostered that type of networking outside of the city that they're solely in. So those are kind of the three main reasons that I really think about um, what brought me to Minnesota law. And all I can say is that I'm so happy with my decision. I love Minnesota. It's really been um, a great opportunity for me and I feel that I've really found my community among my fellow students as well as the faculty and staff. So that's just a little overview from me, <laughs> but now um, I want to talk about what we'll be doing with the rest of this First Look Friday. So shortly we'll be having a special topic panel which um, will feature three current students and they'll be talking about the collegial community and you can feel free to ask questions um, and they'll respond with what their experience has been at UMN and what brought them to, to the U um, and what their decision has been. Following that, we are going to divide you into breakout rooms um, which will have professors as well as current students. And we're hoping that this can just be a little bit more of an informal opportunity for you to talk with folks, get to know the current students and professors, but also get to know um, your potential classmates so you can see what kind of community they'll be at, at the U. And then we'll just wrap up with a short closing at one um, and answer any last questions that you have. But we really want to make it clear that we want you to have the opportunity to understand what, what it's like at the U. So please always feel free to reach out to us, um, talk with us. We can always put you in touch with current students, faculty and professors. And I just wanna say, you know, congratulations on your admission and welcome to the U. Um, and with that, we can go ahead and get started with our special topics panel. So we have um, a few current students here that I'm gonna ask to go ahead and introduce themselves. And we also have some members from the admissions team joining us um, and they'll introduce themselves as well. 
And you can feel free to put questions for the current students in the Q&A. Um, and I will pose those to the panel and um, we can get rolling. Awesome. So, um, well, I guess I will kick off. Thank you, Molly. Um, so my name is Olivia Levinson. I'm a 3L at the University of Minnesota Law School. I'm originally from Garrison, New York, which is in the Hudson Valley. Um, but I also lived in Sarasota, Florida and Washington, DC before coming to Minneapolis. So if any of you are from any of those places, I'd be happy to uh, talk with you more about the transition to the Twin Cities. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I'm involved in a lot of different areas at school. Um, like Molly, I'm involved in Outlaw. Um, this year, I'm not a board member, but the past two years, I was a board member. Um, I'm also a student director uh, with the Consumer Protection Clinic, which Naveen, who is also going to be speaking, is a co-student director. Uh, I'm a senior articles editor of the Minnesota Law Review, um, but because I also wanted some more oral advocacy experience, I'm also participating in a competition moot court team this year. Um, so that's something we can talk about too, is you don't just have to choose between journals and moot court, you do have opportunities to do both of them. Um, but other than that, I'm currently working at the Hennepin County Attorney's Office and uh, really enjoying my time there. And I'll kick it off to Naveen because I'm sure I'll keep talking a lot over the next 30 minutes. Thank you, Olivia. Um, welcome all. And um, as Molly said, congratulations on your admit. And among the attendees, I see a few familiar returning names from like last week's Wednesday Gopher Gathering. So if you feel like you need more new information, feel free to let us know. We're happy to um, share our experiences or any questions or answer any questions you may have. Um, I am also a 3L like Olivia. I am also a student director of the Consumer Production Clinic like Olivia. And I'm also a part of a student run legal journal um, called Journal of Law and Inequality. And um, similar to what Olivia was talking about, I also thought you know I needed um, a little bit of uh, additional oral advocacy skills. Um, so I'm also part of a uh, moot court competition team called McGee Civil Rights Moot Court Competition Team. And I'm interested in civil litigation. Um, so I'm also uh, doing mock trial this year. Uh, we have a, a team that, you know, we field in like different competition teams across the country. I'm originally from Southern India. That's where I was born and raised. I went to school and college there. Um, I came here for graduate school and then I worked for uh, five, six years in the private sector before coming to um, law school. So again, uh, thank you all for being here. I will hand this over to, I think Aaron is just joining us. So maybe we'll give him a couple minutes, you know, with the admission folks. Uh, well, hi, I'll jump in and just introduce myself while Aaron's getting settled. I'm Robin Ingley and the Director of Admissions at Minnesota Law, and it's a pleasure to meet you all virtually. And I'm going to kick it over now. Kate. Hi, I'm Kate Snowden. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions. Should we have Aaron go? Since I think, Aaron, are you connected? Yeah, I can go. Can you guys hear me? Perfect. Okay. Yes. Um, so I'm Aaron Moses, and I'm a, a third year law student here at the University of Minnesota Law School. And I'm Allie. I'm the assistant director of admissions. I'll kick it over to Maddie R. Hi, everybody. I'm Maddie, and I am the admissions coordinator at Minnesota Law, and I will kick it over to Maddie M. Hi, I'm other Maddie M. I'm an admissions counselor and I also recognize a few of you from the Gopher Gathering. So welcome back. And to any who I have not seen in person virtually yet, uh, welcome. Um, and yeah, <laughs> welcome. I will let the, the current students take it away. I think that was all the admissions folks, so. So I encourage um, folks that are watching to feel free to just type any questions that you have for the panel into the Q&A. Um, I'll be happy to pose them. But as we're waiting for some of those questions to come through, I was wondering um, to all the current students, could you talk a little bit about what your favorite thing about Minnesota is? 
Yeah. Um, I mean, aside from the collegial community, which is the theme of this panel and which we'll probably be talking about a bunch, um, I love the wide range of opportunities that are available here. Um, I knew when I was going to law school, I wanted to go to a place that had a more general um, education, not just a school that was known for a very specific area of the law, because I wanted some flexibility to explore different areas. Um, so at University of Minnesota Law School, um, you can come to school interested in criminal justice reform on the policy level, and then you can be introduced to consumer protection. I'm talking about myself here, um, and develop a new passion. Um, it's also possible to explore immigration law, um, to do prosecution end work, defense work, business law, tax law like Molly. Um, there's such a wide range of opportunities here um, that you can really explore your interests and find new passions that you might not have known you had before coming to law school. Um, I can, I can, uh, so I'm starting to be, I can just jump in there. Um, so I would say uh, for me, I, I've really enjoyed um, my kind of interactions and mentorship opportunities with our professors here at Minnesota Law. Um, from kind of day one, um, they they really take an interest in, in U.S. students and U.S. people as well. So for example, for me specifically, my civil procedure professor, uh, Professor Clary, he kind of became a mentor to me and helped me through like different like interviews um, and just and wrote me a letter of recommendation for for a job I applied. So I that's that's something I've really appreciated. And there's there's been many other professors. I work as a research assistant for one of my uh, first year uh, professors. So that's something that I've really uh, appreciated and probably one of the things I've enjoyed the most about about Minnesota law. Yes, um, you know, I love the practical experiences um, very much uh, because, you know, I'm also a non-traditional student. I graduated college in 2008 and then I joined law school in 2018. So that was a good decade between um, I had gotten master's graduate, I went to graduate school and then worked for close to nine years. Um, so I was, I was actually craving a lot of um, practical experience and, and Minnesota law is uh, super well suited for that. Um, what I mean by that is uh, clinic is, is one huge component of it, but um, so are externships, um, internships with either law firms, uh, public interest um, groups, nonprofit organizations, or state, federal, and city government organizations. Um, and there's also opportunity to like extern if uh, for a judge, if you're interested. And this is also both at the federal state level district and appellate level. And, um, you know, if you're interested in working for a corporation, there's also an opportunity to extend for um, a corporation, a big corporation, like, you know, um, think of uh, your 3Ms, uh, Best Buys, uh, Cargill, Stargates, US banks. Um, the Twin Cities legal market is also pretty strong because of the um, really strong business community here in the Twin Cities. And, um, you know, I also have to um, give a shout out to our clinical program. As Molly said, you know, it's one of the strongest clinical programs in the entire country. We have 25 different clinics. Any practice area you could think of, there's probably a clinic catering to that. And um, as a 2 well, um, you know, there's a lottery system, so there's a little bit of fluff over there. But, uh, you know, if you get through it, you get to uh, become a certified student attorney. You're, you're certified to practice law in the state of Minnesota by the Minnesota Supreme Court, as long as a uh, practicing attorney supervising, supervises your work. And that more often than not is the uh, professor who teaches uh, the clinic, or there are also practicing attorneys who teach those uh, clinics. So that's my favorite thing about Minnesota because it's very experience. Great, thank you all so much. So I wanted to go to the Q and A. Um, we do have a question from Elise asking, she's doing a tour of Minneapolis by herself and wants to know where would you recommend that you go in Minneapolis? So favorite spots, Minneapolis. Olivia, let's start with you. 
Sure. Um, well, I'm going to do a shout out to Whittier neighborhood, which is where Mo I used to live there. Molly lives there now. That's jealous. Um, there's a lot to do there. Um, so I would start out by going to the Minneapolis Institute of the Art. Uh, it's free. So MIA is what it's called here. Um, so I would go there, check out the art. Uh, it's a really big space. So I imagine it's uh, okay for social distancing. Um, and then after that, I'd grab lunch, take out at one of the restaurants on Eat Street, which is just two blocks away from the museum. Um, and then from there, uh, if you like walking, I'd walk to Lake of the Isles or even Bede Makaska, which are two of the lakes in the Minneapolis chain of lakes. And I just do a walk around the lake or even on the ice, um, which well, I probably shouldn't endorse that because it could be dangerous, but everybody does it um, during the winter. So I take a walk on the ice on the lake um, and that'll really give you kind of a view of, I mean, one of my typical days. So that's what I'd recommend. Olivia just described my perfect day as well. Um, Aaron, do you have anything to add? Yeah, and, uh, that's like a, a really great area. And one, one other great area is, um, is to check out Stone Arch Bridge. So it's it's in a slightly different part of the city. It's kind of actually real uh, close to downtown Minneapolis and actually pretty close to law school as well. Um, and that's uh, even in the winter, that's um, that's like a great place just, just to walk across and you actually walk across the Mississippi River uh, when you cross the Stone Arch Bridge. And um, I live on one of the sides, uh, we're pretty close to Stone Arch Bridge. So that's somewhere where, especially in the summer, I, I always go for runs across that bridge and kind of by the river. So really anywhere by the river there, just walking is, is a really beautiful place. Um, really all parts of the year as well. And the winter can get a little colder, but it's still just really kind of peaceful there in the winter as well, so. I am going to kind of echo both what um, Olivia and Aaron said. Um, I had lived in Minneapolis for a few years before uh, moving to Chicago and then coming back for law school. I used to live in uptown neighborhood. Um, for folks who uh, know about Minneapolis, I lived by like um, Lake and Lindale. I really loved that neighborhood. But when we came back, my partner and I, we decided that uh, we'll um, live closer to the law school for, for saving on commute. Um, so I live uh, right across the law school on the West Bank. and. Um, the past two years, our, our favorite um, activity has been um, biking on the um, Greenway. And uh, Minneapolis is a super bike friendly city. You know, it can give cities like Portland and Austin a run for their money. Um, almost every, um, you know, major thoroughfare or, or, or roads within the Twin Cities have uh, dedicated bike lanes. Um, or at least, you know, if they don't have dedicated by bike lanes, you'll see active bikers biking in, in, in roads. Um, and there's also this thing called Greenway, which kind of connects um, almost every city within the Twin Cities metropolitan area. Um, so my favorite activity has been biking and um, I'm also going to uh, recommend Olivia's uh, previous recommendation. Um, there's a series of lakes in South Minneapolis, um, south southwest of uh, Uptown. Um, Cedar Lake is one additional thing. Lake of the Isles is another thing in addition to what uh, the two lakes that Olivia mentioned. Um, you know, those are best great for like, you know, walking your dogs, biking in, in, in um, summer, fall and spring and um, doing some kind of outdoor winter activities like, you know, either um, snow chewing or um, sledding in the winter. Great. Thank you for all of those fun recommendations and activities. Um, another question we have from Madison is, what are the types of social activities available to law students um, that you can get involved with? And maybe you can talk a little bit about what activities you're involved in and other ones that maybe you aren't, but um, would like to be. Um, sure, so I'd say there are social activities uh, that you can access through the school. And then there are social activities that some of your classmates are gonna put on outside of the school. So I'll touch on both of those. Um, so in school, uh, there's clubs that you can join. Um, so those range from being like pretty topic specific, like the criminal justice warriors um, who get together uh, to uh, help run expungement clinics, I think like once a month. 
Um, and then there are kind of more activity based clubs uh, like sports teams um, that we put together and then also tort which is the theater of the relatively talentless that's our uh, kind of musical theater group um, which is put on every year they put on a show it's a lot of fun um, so that's kind of what you can do in school um, just some examples outside of school um, at least my 1L year, I mean, pre-pandemic, I'll say, um, Aaron and I were in the same 1L section and our section would host parties throughout the semester um, where everybody was invited and uh, we'd all kind of be able to, to let loose and get to know each other better. Um, you'll hear this a bunch, I'm sure, but the sections from 1L are kind of like families. Um, and so we uh, spent a lot of time together both in the classroom and outside of the classroom and definitely got that social fix there. And, and uh, I would say one other thing I would just kind of follow up with what Olivia said is, so we, we have this um, kind of organization that's dedicated to first year students called the Asylum Law Project. And with that, you can do service projects. Um, they're mostly immigration focused uh, throughout the US uh, so I was part of one in Minneapolis, and, and that's a nice thing. There's also local uh, projects that you can work on or programs, and they're usually over uh, your winter break or your spring break, um, and, and they're usually about a week long. So I, I worked uh, at Mid-Minnesota Legal Aid, a local legal aid organization that has like a dedicated immigration unit. And um, I also did a, a separate service, service project as a second year law student where I went to uh, Harlingen, Texas for a week and worked in a detention facility there with three or actually four other law students and then two uh, professors in one of our clinics, uh, in one of our immigration clinics. And that was a really meaningful experience uh, just to kind of see firsthand how uh, immigration practice is, is kind of done, especially with uh, asylum work, which is which is really important um, right now in the U.S. So that was a, a, a really meaningful, I think, one of the most meaningful experiences of, of my of my three years here at Minnesota Law. Yeah, I think Olivia did a good job of bifurcating two different experiences, one within the law school and one outside. Um, I want to talk about more about the experience within the law school, especially about our student organizations. Um, we have close to 40 active student group. And, you know, this, this just being part of student organization provides you like a variety of student activities, organizations, and leadership opportunities, um, in my opinion, that enhance the classroom experience. Like, for example, Molly and Olivia touched upon being board members of um, Outla as a 1L to L. It's a really great experience that can like refine your organizational communication and leadership skills. Um, and moreover, these um, student groups span um, across different interests like, you know, politics, public interest, culture, diversity and inclusion. And the best part is they sponsor a range of programs um, during the school year. You know, if you think of a semester as like 12 to 14 weeks, um, throughout the uh, week, um, the time between 12.50 p.m. to 1.50 p.m., is a consistent lunch hour, so to speak, for the entire law school. There are no classes happening. And that lunch hour is, is the time when um, a lot of these student organizations put on really cool events. And um, I have had the problem of like, you know, picking which event to attend uh, because there's like two competing really cool events. I would do like 12.15 to 12.45 one event and then um, show up for the other event. Um, you know, in the pre-COVID world, the, there was lunch um, involved. But I also like the virtual component, you know, it just gives me a little bit more agency to straddle different events, you know, if I could, if I can. Um, but, you know, I, I just want to talk about uh, the group that I was involved, you know, it's the diversity and uh, belonging committee. And I'm going to give a shout out to our uh, fellow admissions ambassador, Mario Los, who is going to be hosting the um, fifth MLK convocation. And she's going to facilitate an amazing panel of um, incredible jurists and, and, and lawyers around um, in, in Hennepin County and at the um, U.S. District Court judge. And uh, this is the convocation that happens every year um, after MLK Day. And I think this year it happens on um, 
it, it's it's on January 19th but the event is taking place on the 27th. It's it's open to all. Um, if you were to look up, um, you know, you should be able to find that. And so those are some of the examples of cool events that, you know, student orgs put together. Yeah, I just really wanted to reiterate what Naveen said about the lunch hour events. That's one of my favorite things about the U is our communal lunch hour and all the different interesting panel and discussion and debate events that are put on. Um, over that time by the different student orgs. And you don't have to be a member of that organization to attend those events. Um, and that was, I think it was such a great way to gain exposure to different types and different areas of law um, as a 1L that I really didn't have the opportunity to be exposed to. Um, but I wanted to go to Samuel's question in the chat because it, it kind of touches on what we were already speaking about, about what is club involvement look like? You know, is it a large time commitment and do a lot of folks participate? Um, you know, your 1L year is really busy. Um, do you have time to be part of a club? And maybe you all could just talk a little bit about your experience with that. Yeah, um, I'd say most students are involved in clubs. Um, many are involved in several clubs. Uh, my 2L year, I leaned pretty heavily into that. And so my 3L year, I've decided not to. Um, but yeah, I was, I was in law council last year and uh, that's our elected student body. Um, and it was a lot of work, but really rewarding, um, cause I got to be kind of tapped into a lot of what was going on in school. Um, so there are some like that, which are a huge time commitment. And then there are other clubs where you can kind of just show up to the meetings and you, and you don't have to do all that much legwork. Yeah. And I, I would just follow what Olivia said is that, um, like I would say most students, especially most first year students are part of some are part of some club. But I would say it's it's like pretty different than like undergrad where uh, in undergrad clubs, there's it's it's much more kind of heavy involvement here. Like I was a part of, of, of several different organizations where I was just basically on their email kind of list. And then uh, interesting talks that came up, I would go to during the lunch hour. And that's kind of especially as a first year student, that's kind of the expectation of um, I mean, you, you can also join a board as your first year student. So it's really up to you, like in, in order to like determine how involved you wanna be. But the kind of baseline expectation is that first year uh, students aren't heavily involved in, in student organizations, but, but certainly can be if, if um, that's something they wanna pursue. Yeah, um, I don't have anything meaningful to add other than what Olivia and, and Aaron said. You know, it's, it's based on um, your interests availability and um, you know you can just be like you know like me uh, a passive receiver of emails and and you know get to know about the emails or you can also be super active um, and there's like a sliding scale of interest and availability and people uh, I, I have seen people have different levels of engagement with student groups based on which year and then like you know what uh, what their interest is. Great, thank you. And I will say, um, you know, personally, I was a 1L rep my one, my 1L year and for Outlaw. And I will say, you know, folks that are running these clubs are also law students and they remember what 1L year was like. So in terms of the expectations that they put on you, um, they understand that you're balancing a lot in terms of your 1L course load. Um, but I, I wanted to go to Rachel's question um, about finding summer work. So finding externships and finding um, clerkships, um, both in your 1L year and your 2L year. I was wondering if you could talk, you could each talk a little bit about your experience with finding summer work and maybe how um, the Minnesota community impacted that search for you. Yeah, um, I think one of the best things about the school is our career center. Um, each student gets a designated career officer um, who will like create kind of like a catered plan um, for your summer internship and externship searches, as well as your post-grad job search. Um, so yeah, like the question is, was there help? There's a ton of help. My 1L year, I had a like kind of a longer route finding a summer position because I, I put too many eggs in the wrong baskets uh, in over winter break. Um, and so my career counselor really helped me 
um, way different options of different organizations. And she like helped me land interviews. And I was able to work at an organization that I was really excited about from before I even came to law school. Um, so there's plenty of help in that department. Yeah, and I would also just kind of give a shout out to to the Career Center, um, specifically Wendy, uh, who I worked with over the last couple of years. Um, but everyone who works in the Career Center is absolutely incredible. Um, and how I found my 1L summer job was, um, I so I, I kind of mentioned earlier that I worked uh, with a silent law project uh, at Mid-Minnesota Legal Aid over winter break, so just after the first semester of law school. And I kind of connected uh, with a few alumni who work there. And so when it kind of time came to apply to jobs um, in kind of February, March, I reached, I reached out to them and they really enjoyed the work that I did there for, uh, for that week. And so that's how I kind of landed that my 1L summer job, which, which I ended up working in the immigration department at Minnesota Legal Aid. So it just kind of shows you that uh, getting involved in these student organizations and connecting with alumni can can lead to uh, summer internships. Yeah, I found me also as another fan of Wendy Griak. She is amazing. And I believe so are other career counselors at the Career Center. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not ashamed of saying that she was one of my best friends in 1L and 2L because um, she, you know, not only helped me prepare my application, um, resume, cover letter, whatnot. Um, she also was like a great sounding board for just like talking through what the options are, finding out what the interest in, connecting me with people who had kind of already done uh, what I was thinking of doing. Um, I'll just give one example. One else summer, I was at a uh, firm and it was an amazing firm. Uh, I love the work but I was interested in like civil litigation and they did a little bit more of a transaction work. And you will hear more about OCI and, and other uh, things that happened during 1L and 2L years. But you know, she was the one who connected me with an alumni who was also kind of in the same boat as I was. And I talked to them and picked their brain. And um, that was a really valuable and insightful experience that helped me realize what I really wanted to. And that also helped me shape my 2L and 3L, like, you know, during 2L and 3L years, you kind of have a little bit more agency over how your uh, program would look like, how your schedule would look like. So in a lot of ways, the advice um, and my relationship with the career center um, helped me not just with, uh, you know, procuring a uh, 1L, 2L summer job or full-time job, but also, you know, helped me identify my own interests. So you'll have plenty of support uh, about, you know, your uh, professional um, stuff here at Minnesota Law. Great, thank you. So we have about um, five minutes left in this panel before we will be going into the breakout rooms. So I wanted to maybe just answer one last question. Um, and I wanted to get to Matthew's question about a challenge that you've hit in law school and how you feel the community has um, helped you respond to it. And Naveen, I'm, Correct me if I'm wrong, but are you involved in the well-being initiative? Um, and if so, could you maybe talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was in, I got involved with the well-being initiative, WBI for short, um, during the spring semester. Um, and I believe a few other admissions ambassadors among uh, us uh, were also a part of it. This was the inspiration was primarily a report uh, out of um, ABA. I think it was like around 2017 fall or 2018 spring. Uh, this report from ABA, uh, you know, articulated some concerning trends, both among uh, the legal community as lawyers, judges, and also as law students, there's a deterioration of uh, mental health. Um, and, you know, as, a, uh, as a students in, in you know, um, going to be future lawyers, we thought that we could do something to, um, you know, address this um, while we are in law school. And the, the whole idea was like, fostering a sense of community, uh, not just based on primarily legal interest, um, but also on, you know, uh, outside the law school. Um, and, you know, there were like a lot of programs that we introduced and they are still going strong. One is the uh, mentorship program. Um, I remember um, as two wells when one else came on, 
Um, you know, there are plenty of other mentorship programs as well, but this specific mentorship program talked about, you know, kind of demystifying certain notions of law school. When you talk to someone who has, you know, already been there, done that, uh, giving you an inside view of like, sometimes law school experience can be a black box. Um, you know, that really helped the 1L students, um, you know, just transition from whatever their previous life was to law school. So that's just one example. And um, yeah, Molly, thanks for uh, giving a shout out. That's, a, that's really close to my heart. And uh, there are a few other projects that are also in the pipeline that once you get on, get into law school, you'll know about it and have a chance to participate and contribute. Great, uh, Molly, were you wanting us to answer that question in addition to the W? -word? Yeah, yeah, it'd be great if you if you have any, any thoughts to add. Sure, um, well, it's a great question. I mean, when you go to law school, life outside of law school doesn't stop. Um, so I think the biggest challenge for me uh, was uh, my dad was diagnosed with cancer during fall of my 2L year. And I was, able to connect with the uh, Dean of Students um, before spring semester to uh, figure out how I can craft my class schedule to allow me like a lot of flexibility to go and visit him if I needed to, um, which of course the pandemic happened. So I was kind of a wrench in the side there. Um, but uh, one of my professors was willing to sponsor an independent research project for me that semester which allowed me to maintain the number of credits that I needed um, to kind of keep my like average of 14 credits a semester, um, but not have to sit in a class. So if I needed to travel, I could. Um, so that was kind of like the administrative end of things in terms of support. Um, but then in terms of like school support, like classmates, um, I definitely felt that with like the friends that I talked to about what was going on. Um, and I, ended up having a very successful like year and semester despite all of the, the struggles that were going on in my life. So the community was a huge part of that. Yeah, and I would just I would just say I think uh, I think for me one of the most challenging parts was actually the first semester of one all year. I think for many law students it's probably a similar story, just kind of you know, learning the law and kind of, there's that saying where it's kind of like learning a new language. Um, so just, uh, and kind of learning the expectations of, of your different professors and, 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 and all that. But I think for me, what helped uh, was, was my small section. Um, it was about like 35 uh, of us in the, in the separate sections. And uh, like Olivia was, was in that as well. And, um, and she's a good friend now, but uh, at the time, you know, we were just all getting to know each other. And I think, going through that experience all together at the same time and, and, and building those relationships was was something that I really appreciated in, in, in the moment. And then especially now looking back uh, a couple of years, so. Great, thank you everyone. Um, and thank you all of you for posing your questions. I know we didn't get to all of the questions that were in the Q&A. However, um, we will be moving to breakout rooms soon. Um, and those breakout rooms will have current students as well as um, professors. And please feel free, this should be a little bit more of like an informal opportunity to, you can um, turn your video on and just feel free to talk and ask questions um, with, with the current students and professors.